Hi everyone, it's Kristen from Hello Nutritarian. I'm so excited to be sharing this time with you guys today and going over what I like to call my three essential preps. We're gonna remove all barriers that you may have in your mind about prepping and focus on three no-cook items that are gonna get you more than halfway to where you wanna be for your compliance on this plan. Um, just a little bit about me and Hello Nutritarian. I started this about six years ago, just looking to lose some baby weight after my second. And my parents had gone on to Dr. Verman's plan and had amazing results. And I just decided to jump right in once my daughter was six months old. And I lost over 21 pounds in the process. Um, back then, there weren't a lot of resources available for people who were just starting out. So I really wanted to create a space where people could go once they found out about Dr. Furman and have um, resources to make it actionable in your everyday life. So in my own story throughout this journey, um, it was hard for me to take those first six weeks and create a sustainable forever lifestyle. Um, I was treating it more as a diet in the beginning, and I really focused on prepping because guess what? I'm the only one in my family who's a nutritarian in my immediate family. Um, so my kids, my husband, you know, they eat tons of veggies, they lean vegan, but they're definitely not on no oil, no sugar, and low salt. So it's really important for me if I want to stay compliant on this plan that I actually prep for the week ahead and I make my healthy eating the priority because guess what guys, nobody else is going to make this a priority for you. It's you and nobody else. So let's remove every barrier you've ever had in your mind about prepping. It's too much time, too much cooking, too many dirty dishes, and let's focus on three no-cook preps that are gonna get you so far um, for the week ahead. Just have you ready to go and no more barriers, okay? So um, before we start, I have all links to recipes and resources are on this post, so you can just check those out. Um, and find the links. I added some fun polling questions just to get an idea of where you guys are in prepping and what you guys think of it and in your own journeys. And then um, we're gonna do three demos. So an uh, in-fridge salad bar, um, we're gonna do overnight oats and my favorite dressing of all time, which is an extra creamy, no oil hummus. So we're gonna to get to all of that. But before that, I wanna talk a little bit about um, storage containers because I get asked a, a lot about that on social media. So I'm gonna pop back behind and I will come back around at the end of the segment and answer questions, okay? So I'm heading back over. So when you guys are first starting out with prepping, um, you really want to go inexpensive and get some containers that are going to serve you in a lot of different ways. And the best ones to me are the ball glass mason jars. And I have three different sizes. There's the half pint, which is about one cup capacity, and then the pint, which is two cups capacity, and the quart size. So I'm going to be using all three of these today in the demo. Um, and I like to remove the metal caps that they come with and buy these really inexpensive white plastic caps because you're going to be using these a lot, screwing and unscrewing. I just found it to be a little easier to use the, the plastic caps. So if you're starting out, this is where you should start because they're super inexpensive and you're gonna be able to use this for so many different kinds of props. And then the other must have would be a salad on the go container. So this one's by Sistema and this one's by um, OXO. And you can find links to all of these um, in the, I have a link there for containers. You can just head over there and I have everything that I use for my prepping and in my fridge. So, when you're just starting out, you want something that's to just kind of eliminate any guesswork. Start off with these containers, and then if you really get into prepping and you're enjoying just opening your fridge and seeing, you know, your next three meals ready to go, then go ahead and start investing into the more expensive um, glass snap lock containers, okay? 
So let's get into the first demo, which is the super easy overnight oats. And I'm going to have my little Mary Poppins moment right here. I got everything organized and ready to go. So just like Mary Poppins has that bag that everything comes out of, I like that I have these drawers that I can have everything ready to go. Okay. So for this recipe, the key here is a kind of dark spotted banana that you probably wouldn't want to eat in real life, um, but they're great for nice creams, and it's really great for this recipe because it's going to give you that creaminess that you want, um, and it's also going to be what actually sweetens the oatmeal. Um, so you don't need to have any dates in here. You don't need to have any sugar. You're going to be amazed at what a ripe banana will do for your sweetness content. So if you have a banana or a, um, ma a potato masher, you can grab that. Or sometimes I like to just use a regular fork. And then you're just going to mash this down kind of into like a chunky applesauce consistency. And I've been doing this recipe now with my daughter who's getting more and more interested in what mommy does, especially when I started breaking out, you know, the video gear. Um, so she helped me go through this recipe earlier in the week, and she really enjoyed this part of mashing the bananas. And any way that you can get your kids to be involved in healthy cooking, I think, is a huge win. So we've got it pretty good right here, and I will tilt the bowl over so you guys can take a look. You kind of just want to remove any of the larger chunks, although sometimes I kind of like it a little chunky. That looks about right. So here we go. We've got that mashed banana in there. And then I have everything pre-portioned. So you're going to do one cup of um, plant milk. And it can be um, any plant milk that you prefer unsweetened. And I, use, I usually use almond milk. You can make it yourself really easily. There's tons of recipes to do that online and methods. Or um, you can just get it at the store and try and get ones that have the, flu the fewest amount of ingredients. And then another cup of oatmeal. And as you guys know, especially when you're on um, Dr. Furman's aggressive weight loss plan, you want to keep your um, whole grains to one cup or less per day. So what I like about this recipe is that it's one cup in total, and it makes two portions. So you're only going to be getting in half of your cup of grains. So you're not, you know, nothing's worse than having all of your grains at one meal and not being able to have some grains later on. So you can have this in the morning and still have half your portion left in the rest of the day. Um, so we've got the plant milk, the mashed banana, and the oats. And then we're going to do two tablespoons of chia seeds. I like to use white chia seeds just because I think it is prettier. And then um, one fourth teaspoon of vanilla extract, or I learned this little trick when I went to Dr. Furman's um, culinary retreat, uh, which is vanilla powder. It smells so good. Um, and it has more antioxidants than the regular um, vanilla extract, and it doesn't have that alcohol taste, which I kind of like when you're not cooking something like this. So this is vanilla powder. So you're going to just add that in, and then we'll give it a good stirring. And again, this is so easy for the kids to do, and my kids have actually been loving this for the past year um, for their breakfasts. So this is a really easy way to get the family involved. And this is so super simple, and I bet you guys have a lot of these ingredients all ready to go at your house right now. So after this video or when you get home from work, you can just whip up a batch of these, and you, even if you only do one prep from this demo, this one is just so easy. And then in the morning, because it's still kind of chilly, you can still heat these up if you want to. They'll already be softened and good enough to eat. And then you can just add whatever fruit you have or frozen fruit in there, or whatever you have on hand. And if you want to add some extra seeds, I like to sometimes add flax seeds when I eat them in the morning. And then you're good to go. So this is what it would look like, the mixture. And then what I typically would do is um, I either put them in the pint size or I would split them up into two of the half pint sizes. So um, for my kids in the morning, I just dole this out into two bowls and we're good to go throw some fruit on top. But for you, if you're going to work, then just take 
your half pint filled and then you're good to go. So um, that's where I would, I would be at this stage. I'd be putting them in there and then you're just gonna put them in the fridge for 12 hours at least. And then um, you're ready. You've got your breakfast ready to go. So those are the overnight oats and this is what they look like. This one, this batch, I think it has been 24 hours in the fridge and it just gets a nice creamy consistency and the oats are all softened and um, the chia seeds have bulked up with the moisture, you know, they soaked up the moisture and it's just a really yummy breakfast. And this is a must do, this one, okay? Um, so those are the overnight oats. So now we're gonna move on to hummus. So I'm not gonna actually do the blending here, but I just wanted to show you guys literally how easy this is to do. Prepping does not have to be hard. We're literally gonna just add ingredients into a blender and then just blend it up. And we're gonna have an awesome dressing. You can use this as a dip for roasted veggies or raw veggies. You can make wraps out of this. Um, this hummus, you know, is a miracle worker. That's what I think. Um, so for this recipe, let me see over here. Oh, and again, when you click on the links, you can print out the actual recipes, all the recipes we're doing here. Um, so for this one, we're doing two packages of garbanzo. So I like to get these little packs, um, no salt added. Um, you can find these at Whole Foods. And it pretty much works out to the bean water inside of one of these packs is how much you need for this recipe. So you can go ahead and add in the whole pack. You don't need to drink to drain that pack. And then you want that aquafaba, which is the bean water, because that's actually gonna work as a, a replacement for the water. And it has, it's just gonna give a lot more body. A lot of recipes are using aquafaba kind of as an egg replacement in vegan recipes. So it really is an awesome resource for thickening recipes. So then we would just take another package, but drain them, and I like to rinse them. Um, so that would be the other package of garbanzo beans here. And then the tahini. And you wanna get tahini that has one ingredient, um, just sesame seeds. Um, I know a lot of them are pretty good now, but in the beginning I would see a lot that would have added oil, and we know we don't want any um, added oil. So, and the amazing thing about this recipe, when people make it from the blog who necessarily aren't following an oil-free diet, is they're amazed at how good hummus can taste without oil. And you know you go to the restaurants and everything and there's just like tons of oil spread on top, but you really don't need it. There's amazing flavor here just with the tahini um, and the beans. So now we've got the lemon juice. And I'm really lucky, I have a lemon tree in my backyard, but even if you don't, I really recommend um, getting a pound bag of lemons at the beginning of the week and juicing them. And it's great for recipes. It's really good also to have hot lemon water in the mornings. I just made a blog post about that if you wanna check it out. Um, and it really helps with circulation and just moisturizing all of your organs first thing in the morning instead of just jumping right in with coffee if you guys drink coffee. So that was lemon juice. And then probably the, the hardest ingredient to track down for this recipe is the miso paste. But the good news is I've been hearing more and more that people are finding this ingredient. Um, I usually find it uh, in the refrigerated section of the store. And that's gonna be your salt substitute for the recipe. If you can't find miso paste, it's okay. You can use coconut aminos or liquid aminos. Um, any other kind of salt substitute will still work really well in this recipe. And then we have cumin and garlic. All right. So you guys see, not a lot of ingredients there. I think it was less than seven. And you're just gonna put this in your blender, put the top on, and you're gonna blend it on high until it's smooth and creamy. And there you go. You've got an amazing dressing that you can use, I like to put either um, a balsamic drizzle, just regular balsamic vinegar, or sometimes I also like to do fresh lemon, and I use that as my salad dressing, and I'll be showing you that soon. So this is a batch of hummus that I already made, 
I mean, super creamy. Nothing's falling out there. Um, and it's just my favorite. And my daughter has gotten all into hummus too, so we're the hummus lovers in the family. Um, so that is my second easiest prep that you can do for the week. Even if you only just do the overnight oats and the hummus, like you already are gonna have set yourself up to be a lot better off than you would have without doing anything. And how fast was that that we just did? There's literally no excuse. So this will be going into my batch, my stash of hummus for later. And then now we're gonna go on to probably the most important prep, I would say, as a nutritarian, which is your in-fridge salad bar, which is what I like to call it. Um, so that you actually take the time, you know, once, ideally, or even twice a week, to just chop your veggies and put in the time ahead of time when you're less stressed out, so that when you are stressed out later in the week, you have no excuse. It's already there for you. All you have to do is reach in the fridge, and it's like, you don't have to think about it. You just do it. And that's kind of, if there's anything I can impart to you about why prepping is so important, it's because it makes your actions and your habits automatic. So for me, like these are just pulled out of my fridge. And I just take the time while I'm binging on um, Marie Kondo on Netflix. I can be chopping my ingredients for my salad bar. And I'm not fancy, guys. I don't have any kind of contraptions for cutting. I just have an old serrated knife and a cutting board. Um, so these are some of the salad bar preps that I would typically do. I have about six to eight of these um, tubs of greens. Um, these are mixed greens that are pre-washed that I get at Costco, and you can also find them in bulk at Whole Foods or Sprouts. And then I also like for um, salad bar greens is kale. It lasts a super long time in the fridge. You can cut it into ribbons, and it's still going to last you like at least five to seven days, even already cut. Um, I also love baby spinach. I mean, that rocks out in the fridge. That will last. Sometimes I've come home from vacation and it's been two weeks with the baby spinach still going strong. So I also highly re recommend those. And then I love the loose leaf lettuce. Um, that's another one that I use for prepping. And butter lettuce too is really good. Um, so some other toppings I did. Um, these are raw uh, pumpkin seeds. I've been really into sprouts. These are kale sprouts, but you can also get broccoli sprouts. Um, I've seen sunflower sprouts, radish sprouts. Um, they're really big right now. And then for onion, I love doing green onion. So, and then if you guys uh, ever go on Hello Nutritarian, you know that I love rainbows. So I had to have something pink in there. So we've got the watermelon radish. So. You know, it depends on what you have. If you've got cucumbers, if you have sugar snap peas, then those can be the toppings that you put in your salad bar. It's whatever you want that's in season, that's inexpensive at the grocery store, whatever it is that you want. I love the whole rainbow approach because there's so many phytonutrients, as we know, that have yet to, been, to even be discovered. And I just feel like if you have a wide array of colors, then you're kind of having a wide portfolio of different types of phytochemicals that you're exposing yourself to and you're getting for the week. Um, and if you feel like, like sometimes peppers can go back quicker, so I just eat those more during the beginning of the week. And the sturdier veggies, like the carrots and the grape tomatoes and the red cabbage, which lasts forever, then you can eat those more towards the end. So it doesn't have to be a rainbow every single day, but as long as you're looking at the whole forest of a week's worth of salad bar toppings, um, that's a really good way to look at it. So I wanna show you how I use a salad bar, and I set myself up for success. Um, at night, when I'm making my dinner salad, I'll go ahead and make my lunch salad for the next day, even in a, a to-go container. So I already have this one ready to go. So we've got the salad greens in there, and then I would be making my dinner salad. So I've got that one here, okay? 
So you got all your salad bar stuff out, and you're literally just going to start pouring. And that's what I love about using mason jars, is that you can just pour it right out of the jar, super user-friendly. And then on this one, I'm going to fill the top tray. And you just go around and you fill in those toppings. And as you guys can see here, you're definitely going to be getting your one pound of raw veggies daily by doing two large salads like this. And as Dr. Furman says, we want this to be the main course, so you want them to be big. So, you know, go heavy handed on the toppings. I roughly like to do about one cup of toppings, usually more on the salads, and then two to three cups of um, the greens. And so this is really good if you have a family. I really love this approach. You literally just stick everything out, and then everybody can come by and fill up their salad the way they want. So it's a really nice thing if you have kids or you don't have kids to have an in-fridge salad bar. If you're the only one or there's others. So we're just going around with the toppings. And this is kind of my zen, guys. Um, I love making salads. It's therapeutic for me. It's artistic. Um, I love looking at them before I eat them. I love eating them, and I love how they make me feel. Um, if you guys have been doing this for a while and you go a few days without a giant salad, you start to really feel it, for me, psychologically. Um, so salads has been a huge difference in my life since going nutritarian that I'm really happy that I've integrated. Okay, we've got the watermelon radish. And then the last part is the seeds. You know, we have the tahini and the um, hummus, so you don't need to put a whole lot of seeds. And then for your salad for the next day, while you've been making your dinner salad, you just add that hummus, little container of hummus, right in there. And you're ready to go. That's your lunch. And then for dinner, I would just add a big dollop or two of hummus right on top. And you've got your gorgeous salad for dinner. And you're good to go because you've got your lunch salad ready. And all you really have to do, and I this would be... If you had to go into cooking, I would say start with soup because it's so ridiculously simple. There's so many great recipes, no oil recipes out there. And then how easy is this? You have your soup in your mason jar and your salad, and there you go. You're off to work. You've had an on-plan breakfast. You have an on-plan lunch. And then all you have to worry about is some cooked veggies for dinner. And you've been, your compliance rating is going up. And there's nothing better, guys, than looking into your fridge, opening your fridge, and seeing the next four to five meals ready to go. Because you know that you're on track, you're living your values that you want to live, and you're creating a habit that is going to develop this into a lifestyle. And I can't stress this enough that it's about making habits. And so if you had a bad day or you had a bad weekend and you completely went off track, put it behind you. Don't crucify yourself for it. Move forward with action. Create an in-fridge salad bar, okay, and get back to basics. I think it's really important with prepping um, to a lot of people don't want to do it because it feels overwhelming to them. And I think you have to just simplify it down. And Dr. Furman said it himself that this can be as easy as a soup and salad diet. 
if you're having trouble staying on track or you're 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 a little hesitant to start prepping because you feel like it's too big of a time com commitment then start off with the salad bar and a soup and just do that you're going to have breakfast or you're going to have um, lunch and dinner ready to go just with those two preps and in my uh free food food prep guide you're going to see uh i have eight other tips in there of what you can do to to start prepping and start creating those habits that you need to succeed. Um, so this was the demo part. Um, before I come around and start taking a look at questions, I just wanted to say to all of you guys, thank you for the important work that you're doing with the, the Nutritarian Women's Health Study. Um, there was no one that I'd rather do this for more, my very first um, live demo, than this group because the work that you're doing is just what we need in this community, in the scientific community, is another compelling piece of evidence that eating a high nutrient, um, whole food, plant-based diet is going to cure people of disease and cancer. And by taking the time to be a participant in this study, you're helping bring that evidence into the community. So all of you guys who are here in this group and everybody who works on this study, um, I want to give you my biggest thanks for that. Um, so now I'm going to come over to the front and take a look at whatever questions you may have, okay? Okay. Okay, so first one is about vanilla powder. So you can, it's been hard to find it lately. They used to carry it at Whole Foods, um, but now I've been ordering it online. Um, so I can definitely put a link up at some point um, in my shop of where I've been getting it. Um, okay, is there a difference between white chia seeds and regular? There's no difference that I know of. I mean, there might be a, a nutrient difference, a small one, um, but as far as I know, it's just color. The regular ones are usually black, and um, there's also a white variation. Okay, my son is allergic to sesame seeds. Do you have any recommendations for a tahini substitute? That's a really good question. Um, I think you would be able to use sunflower butter as a replacement because it's a really similar consistency and it's still going to give you that fat that you need um, in the hummus which the tahini brings um, so if you had to start anywhere with trying to find a substitution i would definitely start with the sunflower butter and you can find that at most um, health stores and it's usually just one ingredient the sunflower seeds so i hope that helps um, what is in the jar that's bright yellow that is um, bell peppers do you take the pre-washed lettuces out of their bags? Um, so I get a lot of my pre-washed uh, lettuce at Costco, which comes in the plastic containers. So I usually switch it into glass because I've found that it lasts a lot longer in glass versus um, plastic. Have you ever added red pepper to hummus? Um, I haven't added it to my hummus recipe because I've been stuck in a hummus rut where I just love this hummus and don't want to branch out that much. but I am absolutely positive that it would taste amazing in there also. Do you actually prep your veggies? Uh, yes. Well, so some of them, like I get carrots that are pre-washed. So that's a step to make it a little easier for me that I don't have to skin each carrot and wash it. And, you know, that's really a personal preference. Um, but the rest of the veggies, you know, cucumbers, I'll take some of the skin off and chop them. Uh, bell peppers, I cut those. But yeah, I prep my own veggies too. Um, so I think that's all. I'll take a look over here. Thank you guys, everybody who's joined. It's so awesome seeing names that I know. Um, this has been really fun for me. All right, guys, I think, I think that's it with the questions. So I'm just going to make one more plug to you guys for prepping. Um, if, you, if you're thinking about compliance, and for me in this lifestyle, I've really found that 
compliance, you want to be at a 90, 95% if you're working towards a goal of getting to your ideal weight, which Dr. Furman identifies as a BMI under 23. So you really want to be focusing on compliance and getting that into a habit with the food choices that you make. The in-fridge salad bar is, to me, it gets you halfway there. And then adding on your favorite cooked uh, recipes that you just love, that make you feel good, that are tasty to you. Just doing those simple things every single week is going to bump up your compliance level. And it's going to make um, this kind of living an automatic response. And what I love most about Nutritarian, the Nutritarian lifestyle is how it makes you feel. Um, the me 10 years ago would never be this bright and happy and perky at this time in the morning, um, ever, not without some other kind of source, you know? So I, it's the way that it makes me feel that's kept me on this, even in times where I completely backtracked, almost gave up and had to pull myself out of that time, um, and come back to it because I've never felt this level of vibration. I know some people call it that. I call it the nutritarian feels. It's just a feeling of optimism. It's a feeling of living your values. It's a feeling of being healthy and secure in my health destiny that I feel like is investing your time into creating that for yourself is a wise investment. And Dr. Furman always talks about investing in your health and investing in, um, instead of your bank portfolio, your health portfolio. And the recipes we just went through today is doing exactly that. It's showing you simple ways to invest in yourself and invest in your health. Um, I'm gonna take one last look at the questions and then I'll be signing off. Okay, this is a good one. What about condensation in the jars of veggies? So in, my, in our prep support group, I've seen people who've had issues with the mason jars and condensation. And I'm gonna be posting about um, fridge storage tips, but in your fridge, you really wanna be mindful of airflow. So you wanna take a look at your fridge and find where the air is flowing from. There's usually areas in the back and on the sides of your fridge. You wanna make sure that nothing is impeding the airflow and you wanna make sure that your settings are correct for your fridge and your climate. So there's wonderful resources online to help you figure out the temperatures and sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error. And adjusting those temperatures is gonna help a lot when you have condensation issues. The other important thing to do when you have um, prepped food or fresh cut prepped veggies is as you use them, you want to condense into a smaller jar size. Okay, so if you're starting with that big quart size and you're working through those bell peppers, you wanna be bringing down the size of your jar as you're going through those veggies. And that's gonna also help with condensation. If nothing else is working, then get creative. Get a napkin, put the napkin in there, use what works for you. I wish that everything that I did worked for everyone, but we know that's not the way the world works. So there is some experimentation involved, but you can make it happen, I promise. It's not, these are not huge obstacles, and these are things that you can figure out with time. So I think that's it. I'll take one last look. Awesome. I had so much fun, you guys. I hope that this will be a resource that you can come back to whenever you need some inspiration to get prepping, which is three easy no-cook preps um, that are super easy and super fast. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.